Welcome to Essential 123 QuickBooks Tutorials. My name is Jamie Hudson. I'm a certified QuickBooks Advanced Pro Advisor and owner of Essential123.com. We hope you enjoy today's tutorial and visit us at Essential123.com often as we do update our tutorials regularly. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we can safeguard the integrity of our QuickBooks data file with some of our built-in security features that QuickBooks offers. The one I'd like to talk about in this tutorial is adding users and giving them access levels. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the company menu in the gray menu bar. Then we are going to go to set up users and passwords and set up users. Now you'll notice on our user list, the admin is the default user and it is currently logged on. When you set up your QuickBooks data file, this is the default login that will be set up and you have the option of adding a password when you set up your QuickBooks data file or you can come here to change it. So when we wanna add a new user, we're gonna click add user and we're gonna give them a name. Usually it's gonna be the name of the person. So in this case, we're gonna add in Jane as our level of user and we wanna give her a password. Um, then Jane can always go in later and change her own password to a unique password. So we're just gonna keep it simple and leave it as her name here. And then we're gonna click next. Now we're gonna choose which level of access that we wanna give Jane. We can choose to give her all areas of QuickBooks access, which means it's not quite the same as the admin, but it means that they can access all areas of QuickBooks, sales, purchases, employees, reporting, those sort of things, but they can't do unique tasks that are set up for the admin, which are setting up passwords and permissions for users, uh, importing and exporting data, changing your company setup information, which is your company name, employer identification number, those sort of things, and also changing the company specific preferences. So when you go to that preference menu in the edit menu bar, then you see those two tabs, my preferences and company preferences. The user cannot access or change the company specific preferences tab. So if you grant this user all areas of QuickBooks and say next, it's gonna give you a, a confirmation. Are you sure you wanna do that? So you wanna say yes, and that's really all you need to do. It gives you a summary of all of the areas that they have access rights to and permissions to. Let's go ahead and click the back button and we're gonna talk a little bit about the other types of user access that we can have. The external accountant access is pretty much the same as all areas of QuickBooks access, except for the fact that they can't see sensitive customer data, such as credit cards. So if you're using the QuickBooks merchant services and you're storing credit card numbers for reoccurring charges, your external accountant cannot access that information. So you, that information is safeguarded. But we would do wanna talk about a little bit more is this selected areas of QuickBooks. So if we go ahead and select that and say next, we're gonna get a whole bunch more questions than if we were just giving the user all areas of QuickBooks. So this is great if you have more than one person doing your accounting and you wanna have them focus on specific tasks in QuickBooks. If you have an accounts payable clerk and also an accounts receivable clerk, you can set up access to that area of QuickBooks only for each of those users. So in this case, we'll say Jane, we're gonna give her certain access to certain areas of QuickBooks. Now we've got some options here. We can give her no access to things like our first option, sales and accounts receivable, which is entering invoices, sales receipts, sales orders, payments, those sort of things, and um, processing credit cards if you have the merchant services account there. We can choose to give her no access, and no access means those features would be not accessible for her under that login. She cannot go in and create any of those transactions, view those transactions, or reports involving those transactions. We can give them full access, um, which provides general access to the area and letting them do everything except editing or deleting a transaction. And then there's selective access where we can give them access to only, for instance, create a transaction and we don't want them to print the transaction or we can allow them to current, uh, create and print transactions and no, have no access to reports, or we can also create transactions and create reports from that area. They can also have access to view the complete credit card numbers of customers. We can always check that box um, to allow them to do that. If we only want them to see, say, the last four digits, which is the default, we will not check that box. 
So if we do selective access, we can say cre create and print transactions. And that's in the sales and accounts receivable area. So notice we're on page one of 10 here where it's going to ask us a whole bunch of areas that we want to give our access to. So if we say next, we can give our access to purchases and accounts payable, full access or no access. In this case, Jane is going to be our accounts receivable clerk, so there's no need for her to be anywhere in the purchases and accounts payable. We don't need her paying bills, entering credit card charges, or purchase orders. And we don't need her accessing the vendor center, creating payables reports, or anything like that. So we're just going to go ahead and say no access there and say next. Then there's checking and credit cards, which is activities like printing checks, making deposits, and entering credit card charges. Again, she's really only going to be creating invoices and receiving payments from customers. Making deposits is going to be done by another staff member, so we're going to go ahead and say no access to this level here. And inventory uh, would be doing things like entering purchase orders, receiving in your inventory, adjusting inventory, or running reports. Again, not really what we want to do with Jane, so we're just going to go ahead and say next with the no access. Now time, access, time tracking is something that we do want to give her access to. And we want to say, again, selected areas, and we want to create and print transactions. And that would be entering time data. So if we're using QuickBooks to run payroll and we want her to enter her time in the enter time window, of course this is something that we're going to want to give her access to. So we want to say create and print transactions and say next. Payroll, now this would be to create payroll, not necessarily to enter time or to have her in payroll. This is more for creating transactions like payroll checks, payroll liabilities, those sort of things. And we don't actually want to have her get access to the employee center or to view or run payroll reports or anything like that. So we're going to say no access. Sensitive accounting activities is next. And that's going to be usually things that your accountant or your controller, CPA, things like that will be wanting to do. Um, things like journal entries and go to the online banking section. So if we just have an accounts receivable clerk, they're not really going to be accessing the accounts receivable or the uh, online banking or making journal entries. So we're going to say no access and say next. And again, we don't want to have any financial reporting for just entering invoices and receiving customer payments. Now this last option here that we get is changing or deleting transactions. We can set this up to say they can have the ability to not change or delete transactions. Or we can say yes, they can edit or delete a transaction, but only in the current period. So that's what the second option is. Well, that's why it's, the default is no. So we can actually set a date that says only transactions prior to the beginning of this month can be edited or deleted. Anything after that, or say the prior year, they cannot be edited or deleted. So we're going to go ahead and say that, and we're going to say next. And here's our summary of all the areas of access that we have given this user. And we're going to say finish. So now we added Jane and we told her that we can't, she can't edit or delete transactions from a prior period. And that has to do with this closing date. And that's why we have a link to the closing date here. So if we click on the closing date, we can say that Jane has no access to edit or delete anything prior to last month, and we're going to put in a unique password here so that Jane doesn't have access to that. Now, these users are important for one report that we have here in our reports menu under the gray menu bar. If we go down to accountant and taxes, and we look at the audit trail report, If for some reason you believe your data was compromised or you have a suspicion that there may be fraud happening with your business, this report is where you're going to want to look to see if transactions are being deleted or modified and changed. The audit trail report will tell you when a transaction was entered, who it was entered by, and it even gives you to the time, and then if it's been changed at all. So in this case, you can see this bold italic means it was changed. And it tells you what the current version of the transaction is and how the date was changed. And you can organize this by user. So you can see here, everything's in here under admin, so you can't really tell 
if something happened to change or delete a transaction by any specific person. So that is the importance of setting up users and passwords. Thank you for watching. We hope you found our tutorial useful and informative. Your feedback and comments are welcome. Please send us a note to the email address that you see on your screen. And just to let you know, we do offer live seminars, remote login assistance, video conference, group training, one-on-one -on -one instruction, and so much more. For more information about these services, visit Essential123.com. Thank you!